Now, uh, thank you for staying with us. In, in addition to the countless lives lost to terrorism, another set of security operatives, two Nigerian soldiers and a policeman, have been executed by the Islamic State uh, of West Africa province, ISWAP. This news actually made rounds through a video circulated by a terrorist, the ter terrorist organization. I'm finding it very difficult to, you know, utter these words because lives have been lost. But they show the execution of these victims. We're not going to show you that video. We're not trying to promote the works of ISWAP. Never. We will not do it. But we're going to talk about the security aspect of this because this is coming after a report by the International Committee of the Red Cross, uh, which stated that 22,000 Nigerians in northern Nigeria have been reported as missing. It's Human Rights Day, however, but Nigerians are not happy concerning the variety of topics that are inherent in the Nigerian reality today. So let's look at the situation. For those of you who have not heard about that story, it's out there. It's in the news. It's being carried. But we, know, we, we wouldn't see that video. Nobody wants to spread that video. Before now, when ISWA puts out a bad video, people start circulating them. And then one way or the other, we're furthering their cause. But now we know better. But two, so, two police officers and two soldiers have been beheaded by these guys. And one would have thought that by now these guys must have been overpowered because we didn't hear too much about them. They've been pockets of violence. But here we are again on this issue. We tried to speak to uh, the army spokesperson and he wasn't ready to talk about it. He said um, he had not seen the video yet and that was what we got. But we're going to proceed to talk about this. Is this, the, is this ISWAP trying to come, up, come alive again or is this just a dead man or a drowning man's cry? Well, it's not, I would not say um, it's trying to come alive again. Let me just say that they have been there. And um, the, the thing is, uh, let, me, let me route this around human rights. You know, right to life. And so some people willingly, rejoicingly, will take somebody's life. And the government, who is meant to protect the life and properties of citizen we just watch up until this moment we have not heard anything you're trying to speak with someone who is supposed to be a representative and is not forthcoming how much more government it means that some people just feel well it happens i am of the opinion that like i used to say uh, these things when they happen government can't and will not be able to confidently say that they don't know about these things. You can't tell me that these things are happening on the soil of Nigeria and nobody knows how they happen. Nobody knows where these guys And we have are. intel. We have an intelligence you know, unit for every of these uh -huh. uniformed agencies that we have, don't we? You, definitely. That's what I'm saying. You cannot, they, they can't say that they don't know or they don't have a lead. It, 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 I mean, sometimes, you know, when I sit down, when I watch the, the Hollywood uh, movies and I see some things, I'm like, they know. Maybe all that is just required in between is just to have certain uh, uh, conversation that will lead to capturing and all of that. That's what we see in movies. They, there's, there's this pretense of let us have a it's conversation. A I'm only saying, I'm only saying, because as much as you say it's in movie, I think those are the approach these guys sometimes use. You know, we have heard about the killing of certain terrorist leaders, and uh, we have heard about the capture of certain terrorist leaders, you know, by the United States. And I'm, I'm sure there is a way they actually did all of those things. And we keep saying that our soldiers are the best when it comes to terrestrial and all of that. So what happens? What happens to just getting some, you know, unscrupulous element in the, in the name of being terrorist, killing soldiers, policemen? So nobody does anything. I mean, it's, it's somehow like everybody goes to sleep like nothing happens. Could this also be tailored into the narrative that, you know, we're not trying to promote them, hence why the army is not trying to talk about it, so it, it doesn't blow out of proportion, because this maybe, just maybe, might be what ISWAP is looking for. See, this, 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 this thing is very disturbing, and the, the fact is that when we talk about soldier, that is someone's mom, so someone's dad, policeman, that is someone's uncle, that is someone's friend, that is someone's neighbor. 
in defense of the country, you know, you're wearing the, you're wearing the uniform, you know, to protect the country. That's the oath you swore, and you are killed, you, you are killed like a chicken. And the video is there. Your children will watch it. You know, as, see, I, I, sometimes it's hard to process. And the painful thing that somebody doesn't want to say anything. All right, why wouldn't you say anything? All right, you know this is happening. The videos are already like I said. What are they doing? All right, you are giving amnesty to terrorists. So, so, so I don't know what does this what does this do to the motivation of soldiers? How does it help them? All right, if soldiers are being killed in the war front, if policemen are being killed in the war, this is not the first time this is happening this year. Right, we're ending this year with the same story. We started January with the same story. So what does this thing do, what does it do to the morale of soldiers? How does it help them? All right? And at the end of the day, nobody is being captured. In America, we've seen it, right? Yeah, sometimes, so just, sometimes we've seen that it happens in the world. So just lose their life in, in, in defense of the country because uh, it's, it's part of the sad nature of their job. But we've, we've seen how serious countries like the United States, the United Kingdom, go after people that have killed their, their soldiers, go after people that have Why killed their policemen. Why do we have to go to the US? But Let's just talk about Cameroon here. They're just our neighbors. No. Uh, Cameroon. They, do a, they seem to do a better job than we do. Be it Cameroon, be it South Africa, whoever. Right? I'm just saying that it makes, it makes a lot of sense that if your citizen is being killed, right? right? There's a story of Nigerian, Nigerian citizens that went to go and play sports for Nigeria in Europe. They were shipped to a, to a, was a migrant camp. Nobody has said anything. So like, it goes back to what we're saying about human rights. There is no sense. They, we don't place value on human lives in this country. As a job, if, it's, if it's not a politician, if he's, not, if he's not a governor, if he's not a minister, there's no value. How can somebody that, that, that made up his mind to defend this country is being killed like a chicken and nobody is saying anything and the president will move on? Just like he said, if he's not a politician, do you, have you noticed that when there is a kidnap or a, somebody is killed and all of that and he doesn't have a name, it just goes like that? But have you noticed that if just there is an accident maybe one of the vehicle in the motorcade of maybe the minister or a relative to one honorable and all of that. The way it will trend in the news, and in less than 72 hours, you will see the report that we follow. Well, we have a colonel, a retired colonel, on the phone lines right now. We want to hear from him, uh, being someone who has been uh, in the field fighting to protect our borders and keeping the terrorists out. We have Colonel Chinedu Ohonda, uh, live from Port Hackett. Good evening, Colonel. It's good to have you join us. Good me when you are live. All right, uh, Colonel, if you can hear me, can you tell me if you have seen that video and um, what do you think must have exposed our people once again to eye swap? Well, the video I saw about two, three months ago is quite disturbing, but uh, you know, the present state of social media imposition and superimposition of pictures and so on, anything can take place. First, we must know that, okay, the equipment that were there damaged are Nigerian Army equipment. I identified the tanks, identified the APCs, and soft vehicles that were damaged, but the human beings claimed to be dead may not be Nigerian Army soldiers in the sense that even when I was in Liberia, Sierra Leone, Sudan, Bakati, <laughs> There are always propaganda going, taking places whereby the enemy can superimpose this in and put on, your, you, you put on the uniform of the opposite side and claim they have killed all everybody in that unit or anything. So all those things are things that you may not quite confirm because you are not there in the battlefront and so on. So and could, if you so also... Could, so, Colonel, life, could this be the reason why the army is not speaking about the video? Maybe they're trying to do some forensic uh, to check if the video is authentic and then maybe they could speak about it. Well, definitely, definitely, you know, the army has claimed victory to an extent by cutting off the line of communication of the, of the enemies. And uh, as a matter of fact, the, in, the army has also claimed victory, the military, because for some time now, the Air Force has been pounding the uh, hideouts of these people. And most of their uh, leaders are in disarray. They have been cut off logistically, no supplies and so on. But we hear of trends of events whereby they attack villages to go for food and other logistic materials. And also the army has cut off their fuel supply. A lot of tanks were seized 
and cut off from the enemy. And so the people, the leaders are in this area. And don't forget also that the army came up with Operation Identify Yourself, Ident Identify Yourself, which some people, some human rights activists went to court to prevent it. But all it was in confirmation that, look, most of the commanders of the, uh, of the Boko Haram are in, on the run, and they want to know exactly where they are. That's why this operation came up and so on. But you know, we human beings, we know how to counter every other thing, but you may not know the idea of what the Nigerian military is trying to do. Again, let's look at the incursions that have been made by Boko Haram attacking so many villages surrounding uh, Meduguri and so on. And you know, it's not a conventional war. Fear. So it's not something you can say they are writing home about because they can attack short targets to make uh, gains and see how they can spoil the minds of the people and claim that they are still on the move and so on. So a lot of things have taken place and a lot of things have happened. So the army has really infiltrated into a system with the synergy and cooperation of the uh, Air Force and the army. A lot of things are being garnered for. That is positively for the military. Okay, Colonel, uh, uh, the video spreading is one of the issues I want to uh, discuss here. Um, well, a lot of people do not understand that part of the propaganda of terrorism or terrorist is when these pictures or videos continuously are played or transferred. What is the army doing to educate people as to... Well, uh, or it's left to the videos. public relations department of the military, that is the army, mm -hmm. especially, they've been doing their best to educate Nigerians and inform them that, look, all these things are not our personnel and so on. But we know that so the equipment there, I can vouch, they are Nigerian army equipment. But the personnel that are littered inside the equipment is what I cannot talk about because I'm, I'm not in the war from there. It's, However, they are verifiable. The, the army can also set up a forensic investigation to look at the circumstances surrounding that uh, video, whether it is really true or not. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Colonel. We do not have time. Thank you very much, Colonel. Uh, Chinedua Honda is a retired Colonel with the Nigerian Army. Thank, thank you for, you for having us. me. All right. Yeah. So, gentlemen, he said that he recognizes some things in the video, but that all the things in the video that are unverifiable, and this could be part of the propaganda. But I'm going to ask you the question I asked him. How many people know that there are prop there's propaganda out there? No, How many people are educated enough to know that if you see this video, don't repost it, don't like it, don't replay it, because as many times as you do, you're pushing the agenda of the terrorists. Uh, just like uh, the other time we were talking about uh, hate speech, you know, we talked about uh, disorientation, um, the uh, WhatsApp and all of that, trying to tell you that you don't push this kind of message, you don't push that kind of message. So the same thing uh, is also meant to be applicable to uh, videos like this. A campaign could just, uh, you know, be put in place such that you don't promote uh, videos uh, relating to terrorism videos, relating to crime and all of that, you know. So, however, uh, coming back to uh, what uh, the colonel talked about, you know, I realized that something might not be out of place, you know, the people that were actually bearded. I remember that in, you know, I, I don't know, I always refer to movies, maybe because those people, what they, what they show you in their movies are the things that you, they experience in, okay. in real life, you know. So we have had situations whereby they want to uh, prove to the government that we have in custody your soldiers. Meanwhile, the soldiers that are actually in custody are actually their own men or some people, oh, they already, people. you know, that they already actually have intention of killing. And okay. so they clad them in the whatever uniform and then they do all of that to get the government to do their own, okay. you know. We have, we're out of time and they're telling yeah. me in my ear that we have to go, Ugo, he said something that I would have loved to tackle him on, that the army is doing its best. Are they doing their best in educating the public? I, I, I disagree with a lot of things that he said, all right, because it was in this country that we saw a police officer that was killed, a Mopol officer, yeah. at a bank in nowhere. It was social media that made people knew that that guy died in defense of duty. Do you know what the PR Department of Police said? They flipped the case around. 
Say the opposite of what happened to this man. This man has children. He has a wife. It was social media that did that. The, the, the people that I swap killed, they have names. So if I'm mean, if you check their record to know whether they this people are alive or they're missing or they're somewhere inside the Titanic ship. So you can't just come up and tell people, yeah, it's fine. We understand that social media can have its own issues. But the fact that this people, they gave you names and every other thing. We've seen how serious countries do this thing. We've seen how serious countries tackle terrorism. We are not the first person that is having this issue in modern times. So if we, we, need to, we need to tell ourselves the truth. Soldiers are dying. People are losing their lives in the north. The human rights issues are here in the country. So speaking English doesn't help anybody. If they can't fix it, we're in trouble. Oh, OK. Uh, well, Ugochuku Ikeaka is uh, a political analyst. John Wesley also is a political analyst. So unfortunately, the time is not our friend. And he waits for no one. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank for you for having the conversation. We'll take a short break. And when we come back, we'll be, I'll be giving you my take. Well, it's time for my take. As the world all over is celebrating uh, International Day for Human Rights, and the theme for this year is Youth Stand Up for Human Rights. And I'm wondering, does that really suffice in Nigeria? Because every young person who's one way or the other decided that enough is enough and has spoken up has become a target of sorts. Our social media has been targeted. Even the press, I, I mean, this morning I was just saying to myself, the gatekeepers, we the press, we've also become a soft target to whoever doesn't like what we say, especially those of us who are speaking truth to power. And now there is also a hate speech bill. And guess what? You will die if somebody decides that what you said was hate speech. Of course, Nigerians didn't like it and we screamed about it and they say, okay, we'll take out the death penalty. But what else? What else is new? Something else might just come up. Is there really a day that goes by in this country that our rights are not being trampled upon? It's become like usual business, it's normal business. We just go about, the police officers are, one way or the other, trying to harass us, either trying to fleece us of money, taking advantage of people who do not know their rights. You go to the airports, the guys who are supposed to check your passports and make sure that you're not taking anything illegal out of the country are also trying to fleece you of money. So our rights are being trampled on every single day. And if we have a government in this country, the assignment of our governments 
is to sit down and see how they can better serve us, how they can better lead us so that we can be a happier people. We can actually say, yes, we do have a government that cares about us, but are young people still ready to put their lives on the line in the fight for human rights abuses? Well, we can stop talking. We the media, we the people, we'll keep talking about it and we'll hopefully think that one day the government will hear us and they will do their jobs. I'm Mary Anacle. It's been Plus Politics.